Okay, everybody, here we go. So, we have 30 grams of anhydrous potassium ferrocyanide, and it is extremely important that it be anhydrous because sodium does not get along with water, and molten sodium is going to get along with it a hell of a lot less. Um, all I did was I took potassium ferrocyanide trihydrate and I dried it out in the toaster oven for a few hours at a very low temperature. Um, I mean, it was right, it was just a little bit above the low end of what the temperature dial was. It theoretically, like close to 275F. Um, is it really that hot in there? I doubt it. Um, potassium ferrocyanide will start to decompose if it gets too hot, so keep that in mind. Um, but you definitely want to drive off all of the water. This worked okay for me yesterday, so I huh, hope it works out okay this time. I've got 3.75 grams of sodium metal that I have washing off in some xylene here just to wash off all of the mineral oil that I had it stored under and we are following of course the you know precedent of the great and mighty chem player so we're just going to basically do exactly what they did and put down a little layer of the potassium ferrocyanide in there there we go now can you see that okay I really hope you can see everything okay we are going to take the sodium metal and oh, get back here. We are going to start cutting it into slivers. They say use a sharp knife. I don't have a sharp knife, so I'm going to use a dull knife. <laughs> now, what we want to do is cut it into hello, scupula, get on now. Cut it into thin slices, and we are going to start putting these slices on our potassium ferrocyanide, arranging them in such a way that they will not overlap with each other in successive layers. So we've got some sodium in there. We're gonna put a little bit more ferrocyanide on top of that. There we go. Now we're gonna cut some more sodium. There we go. Got a piece there, got a piece there. So see, I hope you can see. I am placing them so that they're not overlapping, or at least they weren't overlapping, until I held it up and tipped it around. There we go. Yay! All right, you. Get your bitch ass back over there. Thank you. All right, going to put a little bit more on here. And Ken Blair says to spread it around evenly so that you have it fairly well spread out. So I am just going to continue to work on doing that. Did I wipe the xylene off those other slivers earlier? I hope so. <laughs> My biggest fear with this thing yesterday was that there was going to be residual water in it and the sodium was going to react angrily with this water. <sighs> but that never seemed to materialize, which was good. Because I was very, very nervous about doing this shit. Ooh, I hope I didn't make it too concentrated towards the bottom. Oops. Oh, well, we have to have some to cover everything up on the top, too, so. And yesterday I had a few little extra pieces of sodium metal. Which, that was interesting when I went to go dissolve this shit in water. Just FYI. <laughs> Be watch out for that. Oh. Okay. I have high hopes that this is similarly going to go well today. Okay, that covers everything up. All right, perfect, I think. So, hopefully you can see that. I really hope that that was all on camera. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you can see now we've got the sodium metal in there with the ferrocyanide. Now, 
even though Ken Player didn't cover it up, after watching how it went yesterday, I am going to try covering it up. Um, see if we can get the sodium to melt a little more evenly. I don't know. Fingers crossed that it all works out okay. Okay, so I've just put it on the heat. We want it over low heat. And we... It, it, you just want to let it go here for a few minutes. I am going to try stirring it here after a few minutes, um, which I didn't do yesterday and I think might have negatively impacted my yield. It will turn black first and then it will melt. And once it's molten, I guess that's the sign to know that it's done. They said that it would take about 15 minutes, so here goes nothing. Okay, so you can see it's kind of turning black around the edges there. I mean, I don't see how that can possibly be a good thing. I mean, wouldn't that just be from decomposing ferrocyanide? I don't know. I didn't stand this close to it yesterday, so... Man, this wind is just ridiculous. I don't want to cover it up and make you guys miss a bunch of shit either. But I think that might be what we have to do here. I don't know. How's it doing? Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Something's happening. Alright, very good, very good. See little bits of liquid sodium. Woo! It's working. Focus, you piece of shit. Okay, don't be angry. Don't be angry. Oh yeah, Ken Player was also quite emphatic to stress that make sure your crucible can't fall over, obviously. Okay. Now there's turned into like black sludge. And then it liquefied, whereas mine is kind of liquefying first. Whoa! Yeah, speaking of don't let it fall over, don't let it fall over. Okay, should it be doing that? Alright, it's still turning yellow when I pull the stir rod out of there. Which means that it's still pretty much not reacted yet. Okay, well that's, that's very interesting. This is kind of slowly starting to turn white-ish. I am so worried that heat is too high. Well, this is what it did yesterday. Not white, it's still yellow. Whoa! I 
I'm just not sure if it is or not. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Okay, that's it. I think, I think that's it. Yep, it's turning pretty white now. Alright, so now we got to get this out of here and pour it onto a cold surface. Okay, sorry, I didn't have that coordinated very well. So, there is the melt. I've just poured it out on here to cool off. Um, otherwise, it has a tendency to stick in there. You can already see we're getting alkali cyanide crystals in there now. Look at that. Beautiful white crystals. Very nice, very nice. Trying very hard to get it out of there without having to dilute everything down a whole lot with excess water. But I think we're going to have to do that. Wow, that is hot. <laughs> hot cyanide. Okay, you don't need to stick to the aluminum foil. So you can hear it, at least I hope you can, crackling as it breaks up and solidifies. As it cools, it starts to crack and pop. It's cyanide crack. Literally. <laughs> okay, now that there aren't a hundred things happening at once. So, our so sodium metal melted, reacted with the potassium ferrocyanide and formed sodium potassium cyanide. So our no-bake cookie of cyanide is right here, and that's mostly cooled down now. The black stuff here, that is iron. Um, Let's see if I can prove it to you. There you go, see? Iron. So, um, and that's from the ferrocyanide, of course. And there's still some in here. I tried to pour it out quick, because I noticed it did this yesterday, but... Apparently, I was not quick enough. So, um, I am heating up some water over here right now. Getting that ready. Don't you blow my triumph away there, wind. We had this problem on the last video. You need to quit that shit. Hold on a second. Elements of nature trying to be assholes. Now, what I have here is some water that I'm heating up. And over here, I have about 250 milliliters of anhydrous ethanol that I literally just poured out a second ago. Um, well, a minute ago, if we're being literal. I know, I hate when people use that word wrong. Anywho, um, I am going to cover that up so it stays nice and anhydrous as possible. And we are going to use this to precipitate out the cyanide here in a minute. So, as soon as our water gets to a decent temperature, we will... Let the party get started here. Okay, everybody, so we have our cyanide crack here, and the cyanide crack got stuck to the crucible there. Um, now what we're going to do is take a little bit of hot water, and we're going to put it in here first to try to get as much out of there as we possibly can. just a little bit of water, it actually breaks up pretty easily. Okay. All right, now, chem player said that we should keep it to about 70 mils for a full, well, considering if we call what they did a full prep, they started with 40 grams of ferrocyanide. I started with 30. So we're doing it at 75% scale. So we want to keep it to about a little bit more than 50 mils. We're just going to stir this bad boy up and get everything nice and dissolved. OK. 
Okay, yeah. watch the splash. You don't want any getting in your eyes or in your mouth. We're not trying to get on the spaceship behind the comet. <laughs> you young people won't know what I'm talking about. But if you remember Hale Bop, you probably remember that. Hale Bop was pretty goddamn awesome, man. Anybody that saw that shit will tell you that shit was spectacular. Although, somehow, I don't think that there was a spaceship hiding behind it. <laughs> and even if there was, I, I... Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Wrong cult. They drank phenobarbital. My bad. Well. Then don't get it in your eyes because the preacher told you to. <laughs> don't go to South America and drink cyanide, kids. It never works out well. Just remember, if somebody tells you that they're Jesus, they're probably not. I, I would say you can, you know, take that as a rule of thumb. Jesus will probably be much more impressive. You know, it's supposed to come with all that rolling of the sky like a scroll and cool shit like that. be pretty impressive if that actually happened. <laughs> okay, well, now that I've insulted the religion of numerous people, <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be some Heaven's Gate member, you know, family member that'll see this eventually, and how can you say that? My baby, 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 baby. Bad things happen to people you didn't know, and you should feel bad about it. Because that's how humans work. We should all sit around feeling paralyzed that bad things happen to people out there. No shit, really. I had no idea. Okay, guys, so what we're going to do now is we are going to take our filtered cyanide and pour it into the alcohol. There we go. Stir that up some. Now, I don't know how it would go if you tried to use more alcohol. I mean, could you dehydrate it more? I don't know. Chem player did warn us that you would get a reduced yield. I got a stupidly low yield yesterday, but it was, you know, my first time. I was losing my cyanide virginity. I was a little excited, you know. It could have turned out better. So, let's see if we can't make it work better here. Yesterday, I tried vacuum filtering this shit, and it was an absolute nightmare. And I'm really wondering if you can't get away with gravity filtering it, pressing it dry really, really well, and then just drying it in the desiccator. I know they dry, Ken Flair dried it in an oven, but I did it with the other stuff. Um, it was still freely soluble in water the next day. I think we can get away with doing it like that. Um, so we're going to try it, people. We're going to see how that goes. Okay, everybody. There we go. Um, so all I did was I just gravity filtered it, pressed it dry really well, and dried it overnight. The yield, once again, was pretty abysmal. Um... I was only able to get a few grams, but oh well, um, Chem Player did say that the yield would be pretty bad if you precipitated it. Their yield wasn't quite this bad, but uh, obviously my technique needs some work. But hey, no matter, we know we're getting alkalized cyanide, which means I can finally make all of the cool cyanide complexes I've been wanting to make. Oh, I'm so excited. It's going to be so great. <laughs> so, if you like that video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, God damn it, I really don't know what it takes to please you. Subscribe, comment, share the video, donate a few bucks if you think this was worth it. And until the next one, y'all, I will see you later. Oh, so great. It's so great. <laughs>